Well, hi guys, it's me, Alex, founder and instructor from this bench training center. And of course, we are continuing today our second part about the tools on the death world board. I'm gonna give you a few seconds to make sure that you guys watch and that you share, that you like. We're gonna be answering some questions and today we're gonna be concentrating on try hold, back hold, um, market changes, how to know where to go, not to go. So if you want to take some notes, make sure that you are able to maybe write down a few things. I'll be right back in a second. And remember that our uh, webinar is coming up next Sunday. Webinar on how to open trucking company or how to service future carriers with opening MCs. DOTs, clearing house, permits, IFTA, UCRs, 2290, IRPs, and everything you need to know to become that successful carrier. So giving you a second, and we will be right back. Welcome so much, Elisa Williams. You are supporting the mission to make trucking the better place for everybody, for dispatchers, for drivers, for owner operators, for accountant, for being a, fam a family member of the truck driver. So by doing that, what is it going to help? Well, we are giving the free education for people in need. Plus, on Monday, you might have that chance to win the free class for safety or compliance or maybe dispatch by only $4 a month. First, you're supporting the bigger mission. Secondary, if you're a lucky one, you're gonna receive that. So thank you so much again for supporting our mission. And guys, you can go on our YouTube, you can click subscribe and you can join. It's only $3.99. So let's continue. Yesterday, we were just talking about how to search for the loads, how to post the truck. We made sure that we know what does it mean, origin of the truck, right? So this is actually location where you're delivering the load or maybe where you're parking. So this is all clear. We also made sure that we were talking about our quick rate search lookup, right? So this is something which you can get with uh, our pro subscription. It's $180 and you can kind of see what's going on. Let me add myself so you guys can still see what's going on uh, on market in the last 15 days. So one more time, just to remind people who may be rewatching videos, this is gonna help you today in the class we were covering this. So let's say you are in Memphis, in Memphis, Tennessee, and you try to go to Dallas, Texas. Well, first you need to understand by distance, right? Is this going to be long haul? Is this a regional run? Is this a short haul? Is this local? Well, in this case, this is a regional run. We're coming from Tennessee and we're going to Texas kind of staying on that stronger Midwest area, right? Okay, let's say, pretend that you have a flatbed. So if you had flatbed, you want to see, well, how much everybody, every broker kind of been paying in the last 15 days, right? So, and it's gonna tell you, wow, look at this. If you are flatbed and you are looking to go from Memphis, Tennessee to Dallas, well, you should pay attention that everybody was paying approximately $3.13 per mile. We're talking about 452 
miles. So this is a definitely kind of a short haul. Everything which is under 550 miles, I personally consider short haul. So when you gonna look at tread lines, let's look at the tread lines. In this case, if we have a shorter uh, distance, look at this, and we were talking about flatbed. See, it shows it's 261 per mile, but our load, our dist distance is shorter. So that's why we have to be higher. We have to be at that 330. And here is so funny. I'm gonna go to the old version because I like this better. Uh, let me do this. And why I like, because I like too quick back and forth. So let's do the same, flatbed. Memphis, Tennessee. We're gonna put Dallas. And guys, if my if I sound a little bit rusty, well, we had a class today, and the class was about four and a half hours, so we just finished like at three thirty. So <clears throat> forgive me. I'm trying not to scream and not to talk too rough. So look at this. Now we can see flat bed Memphis to Dallas still showing three thirty. But what's gonna happen when we going back? Well, from Dallas, Texas to go back to Memphis is 220. So 220 plus 313, what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about approximately what? 550, right? 560 if you negotiate. So what would be the average rate per mile? Well, you have to divide by two, right? So we're talking probably about 565, 575. Pro dispatcher never ever looks only on head hole. So in this case, what is our head hole? Our main load is Memphis to Dallas. Is our head hole? What is our back hole? Well, Dallas coming back to Memphis is our back hole. As a dispatcher, you need to put few loads together for two days, for three days, for one week to see what is your average rate, right? And if you still dispatching and your average, let me see if I can make it bigger. Hold up. Yeah, I can make it bigger. Is it better? Yeah, it is better. Okay, so look at this number. So if my average for flat back, is still at 246 or 261 or if it's a drive and at 220 216 for the whole miles loaded empty miles that means that i am still doing a good job that means that i am okay dispatcher if your average is a little bit higher 10 15 10 20 all that means that you guys are rocking that you are that pro dispatcher who probably doing what? Eliminates dead hands, right? Probably knows how to ask for back hold, probably knows shepherd and receivers, probably pre-booking, probably before sending truck somewhere, it's checking what's gonna happen there. So if your numbers are higher than national average, that means that you are that good dispatcher. So for the new dispatchers, for people who take in my classes, for people who start dispatching, it's gonna take a while. That's why understanding principles, that's why knowing the tools, it's very crucial. So let's go back to our tools. Are we all good with a quick research, right? At least you have an idea what everybody's paying a lot of times it can be different from the reality. Remember, they're giving you for 15 days average. Well, let's just think about this. If you are in Chicago on Monday, what's usually gonna happen on Monday in Chicago? Well, it's a lot of drivers who live in Chicago. That means that on Monday, capacity of loads and how many trucks we have is gonna change. Why? Because it's gonna be more trucks than loads on Monday because everybody wants to come home, 
spend time with their family, especially in the summertime, right? You want to go to lake, you want to barbecue, you want to go pick up those strawberries. So simply, your Eastern European girl says, if you're not home by Friday night, that's it. I am done with you, right? I mean, that's what it is. That's what happened. So most of the guys get home on a weekend so they can spend time, go out, take care of the kids, take care of the house. And if your dispatcher did not pre-book the load on Friday for you to pick up on Monday morning, most of you are doing what? Well, you go to unload probably, and then you sit and you wait till 1 p.m., till 2 p.m., till 3 p.m. And let's be realistic. Please answer honestly to me. How many of you are wasting all Monday waiting for the load? Be honest. I know the reality, lots, probably 30%. By simply because your dispatcher does not understand that Monday in the areas which have a lot of truck drivers is always gonna pay lower unless what? Unless this upcoming Monday, well, it's gonna be different. Why? Because it's a holiday. So we're gonna have a little spike in the price. So if person wants to make money, go ahead and go pick up that load on Monday. Just pay attention. Hours may vary. Shipper receivers might only be open for a few hours on Monday because we have a huge holiday coming up. We have our Independence Day, right? We're all proud to be American and we're going to celebrate with barbecuing, with watching the fireworks and everything else. So do you see? Sometimes things are switching. In this case, this Monday is going to go different route. It's going to be higher payloads due to what? Due to most of the drivers are not going to go on the road. Why? Because they're still going to stay home. So spot market due to the ratio between what? Between your trucks and loads. So how can you learn this? Well, by simply start doing and learning market conditions, right? And today we are covering that. We'll see if on Monday, we'll see how the holiday is going to go. If I'm going to do live, we're going to go and compare truck stuff, right? Okay, next, next, next. So you can be inbound, outbound, very simple. Look at this. Uh, what is that MCI? Well, it's in the case of behavior for what? For loads and trucks and the factors in the CZL trends. So all of this, you can figure it out. So let's do this. Let's see outbound. Let's put, let's put Chicago. I'm in Chicagoland. Most of my viewers are also in this area. So we're gonna put Chicago and we're going to put Prior business day, we're going to put, okay, here and day. And remember, today is Saturday. So it's not really going to show us exactly, exactly what's going to happen on Monday. But today it shows that it's a tight capacity. What does it mean? Well, look, for the drive-in today, it was only, only, 11 loads and we had 354 trucks which were looking for the loads. So was it possible today to find a load on Saturday if your dispatcher did not book one yesterday? Well, no, this was for driving. Let's look for the reefer. Well, let's look for the reefer. Well, a little bit better because we only had 100 reefers posted and we had 15 loads still. This number, guys, is not that realistic number. Some people try to look at the colors and they say, well, I took the training. So they told me, when you see the red, just go for the red. That means it's going to be hot market there. Let's see. Okay, North Dakota is red. Wow, look at this. Our trucking gurus are telling you. It's very good. It's plus 96. Well, why is it plus 96, guys? Because it's zero trucks and four loads. 
is that really good area to go to if you only pay attention to plus 96 uh, MCIs? No, you have to look at the numbers. Of course, it's plus 96 because it was zero trucks in North Dakota. Dry vans posted today and it was full loads. Oh my God, look at this. Why don't you start sending your trucks there? Don't do that. Make sure you learn to look at the full data. Okay, let's click on another red area. Okay, let's click on Idaho. Wow, look at this. It's even better. Very tight capacity. Well, very tight capacity with for trucks. Oh, because Idaho is dead now for dry vans. What the hell are they gonna take from Idaho? Look at this. Only 22 trucks and 36. Load to truck ratio is 1.6. Well, if you guys looking at the color and you jumping for that red color, well, I feel bad for you. I don't know who is teaching you or if you don't know how to put the colors and numbers together, but that's what should happen. You need to practice this. Okay, let's choose, let's choose reefer as well. And let's see red California. Well, this is a little bit different, right? Now we have 49 loads, but 128 trucks. Still supply and demand. Do you think that California was really paying today? No, it was not because it's still more trucks than the loads, right? Okay, let's let's go to uh, Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin is also showing plus ninety nine, but again, we are talking about today, and unfortunately, today is what today is Saturday. So let's work on it. Let's see. Okay. Oh, location. Let's just let's just click. Let's click on select extended area. Okay. Let's select Grand Rapids. We still with reefers, and it shows it's 62 loads and it's only 26 trucks posted. What about driving? Let's see if that's gonna switch, right? Okay, let's make this map um, bigger. Sorry, it's moving. And also let's go to the same Grand Rapids. Well, 36 loads and 105 trucks. So is that gonna be easy to find a dry load right now in Grand Rapids? Okay, let's check on the flatbeds. What's going on with the flatbeds there? Again, let's make it bigger. Let's kind of go to the same area. And our area is still Grand Rapids. And look at this, for flatbeds, is nothing there. Okay. You can go prior 30 days. So let's see, how can you actually outbound you choose outbound how can you start learning which areas are good for outbound okay let's check chicago market so look at this we are doing the research we are learning we are learning the market right you guys want to see where to go where not to go in this case we are looking for 30 days from chicago area for flatbed so what is the market tells us? It tells us that it was 4,497 loads with the average truck 3,000. So load to, three, uh, to truck ratio was 3.6. So for flatbed, it was a little bit more loads than the trucks, but still, look, it's not that big change, okay? Let's see the same area, but for reefer. Okay, same, we are doing 30 days run. And look at this, but for the reefer, we had 9,000 loads and same kind of 3,800 trucks. So just seeing this right now, 
Is the river doing better from Chicago flat? That's doing better from Chicago. Well, let's see. Maybe, maybe dry wet is gonna win, which I don't think so, but let's see. Maybe. And here it is. Surprise. So in Chicago area, dry goods. Look at this. We had 20,000. And you guys are gonna jump and gonna say, okay. It's so good for dry lands in Chicago, but pay attention. But you also had 11,000 dry lands. So your ratio is one to two. For reefer, the ratio was, okay, what was for reefer? Let's see, one to six, right? So it's better. And for flatbed, it was three to six. So can we just jump for the number of the loads and say, well, dry vans are rocking in Chicago? No, actually they do not because the load to truck ratio is 1.2. It's really hard to get a good paying dry load right now in Chicago. Reefers were doing a little bit better. They were doing 1.8, a little bit better. Although, Flat bed had only 44 loads, but their ratio was 3.6. So it was easier to negotiate flat bed loads from Chicago. Guys, please ask me questions if you understand what we are looking for. Okay, let's go to our no-go areas. Let's go to Montana. Let's go to Billings, Montana. For the whole month, look at this. For the whole month, for flatbed, you only had 819 loads. Yes, ratio was 6.5, but you also had barrier, you had 380 trucks. So load to truck ratio is high. But look at this number. Can you compare only 800 loads a month to 20,000 loads, for example, in Chicago, to 4,500 loads for driver, for whatever we had for reefer? So right now, if you're watching me, I see my student is watching me. So Tracy, now after the class, when next time I'm going to ask her, Tracy, Name me at least three dead areas. Doesn't matter if it's a flatbed, if it's a reefer, if this is a dry van. Well, her first choice should be what? Well, Montana is kind of that. Let's go to North Dakota. What's going on here? Well, North Dakota, look at that. Very loose capacity. Again, the whole month for flatbed, right? Let's see if it's a different for dry van. Well, it's a little bit better for dry van, but still. This is only 1,700 loads, right? Let's see for the reef, for the reefer, if you go to North Dakota. Again, the whole month is only 836 loads. So now, are we learning this? Are we going to Montana? Are we going to North Dakota? Are we gonna go there, guys? No, you're not. You can pass through North Dakota, when you go maybe to Washington, if you are a reefer and you want to pick up those chairs, you can go through Montana if, again, you're going to Oregon or Washington. Unless you live there, unless you need to visit your family there, we are passing through. Or if you think that that load, which gave you $600, is really going to compensate for the debt market. And here is the reality. The 600 bucks is not going to make a difference. You first going to be stuck without load. Secondary, even if you have the load, your debt head is going to be 200 to 300 miles because all you need to take very cheap load, or you need to go back to Fargo, or you need to go even to South Dakota. Maybe you need to go to Idaho to get anything a little bit better. So after you calculate your empty miles, are you to your loaded miles, what's gonna happen? You're gonna finally make that decision. You know what? That $600 extra did not make any sense, correct? Correct, okay, let's go.
Another one. Well, let's go to Nevada. Okay, we're gonna choose this market right here. Well, again, we're talking about the reefer. When you look at the map, what do you see when you look at Nevada? Besides when you go to Las Vegas and you party and you go gamble and you dress up and you go see the circus display, what do you see there? Well, a lot of what? Military bases there, right? Air forces. But if you even fly, you see only the rocks, rocks, and rocks. You don't really see manufacturing going on. You don't really see farms there because this is a desert. So will be reef are having a lot of outbound backhaul from there. No, it will not. Okay, let's check. What if you are flatbed? Look at this, okay? A little bit better. 538 by still, not enough. What if you are driving? Well, driving has a little bit more, 25, uh, 2,500, and the ratio is three to seven. So even if you go to drive, it was driving to Nevada, well, make sure you pre-book. What other area should we choose? Okay, let's go and compare now numbers in California. So let's say you don't want to go that far because 30 days, it's a long time, and you want to see what was going on in California for the prior eight days. Okay, let's go, let's make it uh, bigger. Oh, come on, Mom. Okay. Okay, so let's go to, no, we're not going to Denver. We're gonna click on Los Angeles. And we're gonna start with a drive-in. And we're gonna click exactly Los Angeles market. Well, look at this. If you are driving, who is hoping you're gonna go to California and finally, you're going to have the golden load. Not happening. Not happening at all. Even if you are Amazon, even if you are faking that Amazon accounts, you're going to be kind of stuck in that California. Why? Because look at this. We have 15,000 loads and we have 13 trucks posted, right? So this is in the last eight days. What if we are reefer? Well, maybe it's gonna be a little bit better, right? Because why? Because we have some produce, right? So we have some produce, but still numbers, numbers are not as high as they should be. California produce right now paying, but it's not in a full force. I don't know if California this year will ever come up or not. We'll see how it's gonna go. And if you are, uh -uh, Flatbed, what's going on in California with the flatbed? Well, barely any loads. So from here, if you are new dispatcher and you don't know what to do, this is the steps you need to start doing. When you have time in the morning, when you have time in between making phone calls, when you may be studying now, that's what you need to do take 30 days so you kind of picture is this state even have enough loads because see now you can compare 20,000 dry loads in the months in chicago area and 800 in montana right well can you compare 20,000 in chicago and 1200 in nevada right so when you guys gonna start go through each state and you just gonna click and change from 30 days then for eight days and then prior day and today that's how you guys gonna learn the market conditions and that's how finally you not me telling you but you buying wasting your time by sitting there and going through this 48 states and make sure the bigger states you have to divide right by different market. Did you see how the map even telling you? Well, are you talking about Los Angeles market? Or you wanna go to maybe Ontario market? Because sometimes 50, 60 miles, it depends on your trailer, can change. So start doing this. So let's see how many of you are actually using these tools. Well, it should be kind of part of your job, right?
So let's go. So we cover this market conditions, right? Okay, let's go to another one. Let's pause the truck, right? Let's do this. I am going to go into my dashboard. I am going to search for the loads or add truck. In this case, let me search for the load, okay? I am looking for a load from Chicago. Going to, let's say, Dallas. Okay. Let's put that I am driving. When I'm looking for, I'm going to look for Monday. Exactly for Monday. Okay. Let's see. We have 10 results. I'd like to organize by dead head because I do believe that by eliminating dead head, your rate per mile is going to go up. So let's see this. Let's open. Fusion. Fusion transport. We are picking up in Romeoville. My truck is posted in Chicago. Do I need to know my dead head? Do I need to know when I'm delivering? Am I already empty or not? What time is my delivery? Who is my receiver? Do I need to know that? Yes, if I want to become a pro dispatcher. I see that they need a drive-in, 53 feet. They are telling us, hopefully they are not lying to us, that the weight is going to be 26,000 on the weight. Well, here they say cold craze extension 121, and they even tell you, well, it's one pick, two stops, and both stops is in Sanger, Texas, Thursday delivery appointment. So just by looking at this, 891 miles, picking up on Monday, July 3rd, why? Why are we delivering on Thursday? Why? Because we have holiday. So in this case, if you negotiate, this is, a longer transit right there monday tuesday wednesday for 891 longer transit due to the holidays extra stop one pick two drops you need to verify what time are those appointments how realistic how strict is that receiver are you going to waste all thursday or is it going to be early appointments so is that going to be something which is going to help you to maybe negotiate that better rate well, uh, let's see, Fusion Transport, never work with them. Let's say that shows that their credit score is 97, days to pay 25. If you do have factoring, that doesn't mean anything to you. You still have to go. You still have to go and you need to verify with your factoring. If you have RTS, most of my carriers have RTS, guys, right? because I am agent for the RTS. So if you are looking for factoring, make sure you reach out to me. So I would go to RTS website and verify this MC number. Okay, let's say I verify and they approve. Could this load work for me or not? Well, if my guy lives close to Romeville and he does not want to be surprised on Wednesday, because there's gonna be less loads on Wednesday because again, after the holiday, a lot of people wanna go back on the road. A lot of shippers already ship their stuff. So if my guy says, you know what? I better get loaded on Monday, then I'm gonna go home, then I'm gonna have my barbecue, and then I'm gonna leave probably since he has to deliver on Thursday in the pants on appointment time, Maybe I'll have early barbecue. I'm not gonna drink the beer and I'm gonna leave when? Thir Tuesday afternoon. So I can make the transit, right? If he is running legally. If he's driving like a str strong soul, Sergey, well, he can leave even on Wednesday and go straight through, right? Let's be realistic. Do people still fake logbook? 65% are faking logbook. Do they really care that that's killing the market? No, they don't because they still think that by faking logbook, I'm going to make more money. No, no, my dear strong soul, Sergey or Mike or whatever your name is, you're not. You're killing your equipment. 
you actually driving more and your profit your growth might be a little bit higher but your profit in the end of the day is lower because what are you doing you're taking the team loads you take longer loads so actually by taking longer loads your rate per mile is lower so in the end of the week your profit is the same as a guy who running legally but his rate per mile is higher right hopefully you guys getting this message not only from me but hopefully you understand your operational cost okay so in this case you are dispatcher and you need to do again what well how much should i ask for right how much should i ask for well go ahead and look what's everybody's paying and right here in a new that you see well everybody's paying approximately two bucks per mile 17.91 that's without extra transit this is without picking up before the holiday and this is without extra stuff so can you do it for 17.91 with everybody else well probably not extra day in transit extra drop well you should be looking probably 23 2400 then it makes sense otherwise well i don't think so well the new dispatchers get frustrated and they're like okay so let me see i am taking this guy to dallas so let's pretend let me open the whatever i'm not going to do the pc miler so it's easy because a lot of you not using pc miler so let's put romeoville romeoville illinois what was it uh was it um i think it was sanger right sanger texas two drops so this is our miles okay if we go back to post rocks and let's pretend let's say we're going to see what's going on on thursday because it's going to be thursday we're going to put that sander access going back to chicago and it was man was driving okay so let's pause well they're paying let's just take the highest paying one Let's take we take 1500 or what can we do? We can go back to our rate per mile, right? Where is our rate per mile? Right here, oh, not here. Okay, let's go here, quick rate search. And let's see, coming from Romelville, to center, Sanger, Texas. Okay. We should get paid 1791. That's exactly the number which shows on the debt one. So they do this. Coming back, it's going to be dollar seventy-seven. So dollar seventy-seven plus two oh one is giving us what? Three seventy-seven? Three seventy-seven divided by two. What is it gonna be? Come on, who is doing the math? Who is doing the math? 277 divided by 2. Well, you're talking probably about what? Dollar 80, dollar 85, maybe dollar 75. It depends on the dad had and everything else. So now that's why I posted this. So you think, well, going there, I got 1791. Hopefully, you did negotiate it for extra day. Hopefully you got extra money for that drop. Hopefully you end up at least, at least with 2000. Let's make that happen. So 2000. Well, now can I afford to go back for that 1500 back to Chicago? Or should I split my coming back? Should I cut it in two loads? And that's why look at this. When I posted taxes going back to Chicago, it's giving you this option, which we call bad trifle, right? And that's why I love working with that. I love actually uh, being affiliated with them, but I want to make sure that you understand something. So it tells you this. 
well, if you really want to split, you can make extra money instead of going exactly back. You can do try haul, and it gives you option. So let's see. First option is you can go back to, you go first to Louisiana, right? So it tells you first from this area, go to Louisiana and then go to Chicago, right? Okay. Well, look at this. You have to go to Louisiana, so your miles are changing. You're adding more miles, right? Does it look like trifle to you? Let me copy this. Cut. Look at this. If I go exactly back, I am only talking about 1,861 miles. When I go to that Louisiana, well, first, my miles are changing, right? They are changing. Plus, Louisiana is also not paying. So is this a good example of try haul? Should I break in Louisiana to go back? No, it's not. So let's look other route options. Second one, they say, well, go to Texarkana. Okay, go first to Texarkana, then go back to Chicago. Let's see this. Where is Texarkana? Well, a little bit closer, still, this area is not really paying. Remember, guys, we are talking about dry van right now. Not much going on there. Still not option for me. Well, then they say, go back and first go to Quincy, Illinois, right? And then take a shorter load to Chicago. Okay. Something like this can make sense for me one more time pay attention because this my miles did not change that drastically i have let's do the details let's look at the detail two coins i have 694 miles it can be one day transit picking up on time here and delivering next day remember if we're talking about driving most of it it's going to be first come first serve then i can take the shorter loads which should pay more because it's a shorter load. So probably instead of getting 14, 1500 back to exactly to Chicago, I'm gonna end up with 17, 1800, two, $300 difference. What other option was there? Well, it told me to go to Decatur, Alabama. Where is Decatur, Alabama? Let's see. Well, where is Decatur, Alabama? Okay. Well, does it look for you? And maybe you're not even a dispatcher. Does it look to you that it is try hole? What is the purpose of try hole? Try hole is breaking your back hole in two trips without much change in miles and transit. So this, guys, this is a terrible choice if you think it's a tri -hole. It's not a tri -hole. It's just driving around the USA with a desperate dispatcher who thinks that it's tri -hole. This is not tri -hole because you added too many miles. You go all the way away from Chicago. You're not on the way. Okay, well, last one. What was the last decision? Well, they're telling you, really? Oh, uh, no, that's not this one. So you have to go to Iowa first. So let's see if that Iowa can work, right? Let's see. Let's post it. And let's see. Well, right here. So Iowa can be also an option because we are changing only around 100 to 110 miles. Still, we can combine two loads, but let's pay attention that Iowa right here 698 so has to be first come first serve so you still still have the transit coming back to chicago not more than two and a half days so that's what we call dry hole okay so let's see what do we have here let's say hi hello mr brown how are you 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 dispatching how's a new carrier hopefully you're using the dry hole and not just driving around. Good evening, Tracy, again. Come on. 
You need to you need to take a break from my classes. Alex, I love you. I love you too. I love all of you guys. You are red hot. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Alex, do you do one-on-one -on -one in person training? No, unfortunately not. I'm very busy with all the project and our class is intense anyway. In classes we do share a lot and you can learn a lot. So, try hole. Are we clear on this try hole? Let's do one more. Let's just do one more. Let's close the drop for Monday. Let's say you went with your dry van to Los Angeles and you cannot find a good load. Where are you going? And you need to come back. I don't know, where do you need to come back? Let's say you need to come back to Newark, New Jersey, right? Let's do, let's switch. Let's switch to flatbed, right? Since we knew that flatbed was not doing that well in California. Let's add it. Let's increase here to 40, 48,000 because it's a flatbed. Okay. Los Angeles to Newark. Wow, look at this. They are paying 7,000 from Riverside, California to Trenton, New Jersey for 2,700 miles. Okay, good job. So let's look at their possible tri hole option. Again, guys, pay attention. We just switch. We just switch to flatbed. So they are telling us if you're going to go directly from Los Angeles to Elizabeth Market, approximately nowadays, you're going to be averaging two bucks per mile and you're going to get 5,600. So let's prepare the map. So let's put here, let's delete all this. Okay. Let's delete and let's put Los Angeles. So one more time, if you take Los Angeles and you go to the Newark area, uh, Newark area, New Jersey, right? Where's my glasses? Sorry, guys. You know what? I'm kind of getting tired after the class. So let me put my glasses. Okay. If you go to Newark, New Jersey, and please make sure we're not driving through there. We go to Salt Lake City or we take 40. We're not going, we're not taking 70. We're not taking the route of the desk, which they call it. We're not going through any national park, guys, right? We are taking the routes which are safe for our semi trucks. Okay. So if we're gonna go, what's wrong with my glasses? So if we're gonna go, we're gonna get paid approximately $5,600. Okay. What are they telling us? Well, they are giving us options for tri hole, and they're telling us if you listen to us, you're gonna make instead of two bucks, two bucks per mile, you're gonna make uh 290, right? 290 per mile. Look, instead of 56, you're gonna make 8400. Okay, let's see how realistic is that tri hole. Okay, let's do it. So they tell you to go to Charleston, West Virginia. Okay, so now you're splitting that. First, you're gonna go to Charleston, West Virginia. Then you're going to go to Newark, right? So somewhere here. Well, first, if you ever been driving, how many drivers, especially if it's a flatbed, are gonna be happy with you sending them to West Virginia and take 64. How many? Not that many. 64 is a very challenging road. It's a mountains. You don't want to be heavy there. If something goes, it's not that easy. And let's check in Charleston, Virginia. Let's just check. Copy. Let's post new truck. Let's even post for Wednesday. Let's say you're going to end up there Wednesday. Let's uh, post. And we were going to Newark for flatbed. Let's see how many loads are there. 
Wow, look at this. You are so lucky. You have a six load. And look at this. They have dead head, 150 miles, 132 miles. So is this a good example of trifle? Tell me. I mean, you tell me, guys, please put the comments there. Would you try to do this when first Charleston, West Virginia, 64 is not where you want to be? This is not the route you want to take because of mountains, because of not having loads there. And then you end up going there and not having that load. So no, this is not a good decision. Okay. And they're telling you, go to Green Bay, Wisconsin first. Okay, let's go to Green Bay, Wisconsin first. Copy. Instead of uh, going right away to Newark, we're going to go to Green Bay, Wisconsin. Okay, let's see. Oh, it's great. We need to make sure we, we move this here. But what's what's changing here? Well, we are adding approximately 400, 500 miles difference, right? Yes, so is this a drive hole? Now what's gonna happen? You have extra day in transit at least. You're going all the way back to Green Bay. So by the time you finish this, I hope you have enough cycle so your driver gonna end up home and newer. If something goes wrong, or he's gonna lose some hours due to the traffic, due to the longer loading, due to anything plus, he's coming from West Coast. He's already losing three hours to get to East Coast on his ELD. Again, if you're faking logbook, don't even pay attention to this because you do whatever the hell you wanna do. Okay, in this case, this is not a good try haul, right? Yes or no? Please, let's see. Ah, uh, no. Okay, Tracy, good job. No. Okay. <laughs> I cannot take a break. I have to soak all the knowledge I can get. Good job, Tracy. Okay. So in this case, not the best decision. Okay, let's go next one. Well, you're going to first to Winchester, Virginia. Let's see. If I go first to Winchester, Virginia, where is the Winchester, Virginia? Hey. And it is somewhere here. Well, right here again. How many drivers still want to take this route to go through the mountains in West Virginia, Virginia, and you are flatbed? Well, not that many. They'd better go and take through Salt Lake City, go through Nebraska, go through Iowa, go through Illinois. They want to take that route. They don't really want to deal with mountains, being a flatbed, being probably heavy, securing that load. No, this is not a good example. Dear Deb, okay, let's see here. Well, what if we have better paying load to Mississippi first? Okay, Jackson, Mississippi. Well, here you will need to, before you decide to make this a trifle, which is kind of on the way to Newark, you will need to make sure that you check is mississippi right let's add it let's add this let's put mississippi jackson mississippi and let's see how many loads are there all the time well right now only one posted to allentown but look at this in space right so not that bad you need to have the uh tar 80 feet but you can do it let's go to the market let's go to the market condition and let's do one more thing outbound let's put that jackson mississippi and let's verify here as well well look at this average holds on 900 and average truck is 1268 low to truck ratio is 37.1 what does it tell you? It's way more trucks than the loads. So here you go. Another verification. Do you want to break it? Oh no. Let's go to Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Savannah, Georgia. Okay. Let's go first to Savannah, Georgia. Then we're gonna go to Newark, New Jersey. Look at the miles. 
we increased the miles, we added extra day, we're going all the way to Savannah, Georgia, then we're going to Newark. So no, this is not a good example of dry hole. So what would be a good dry hole? I can tell you this, probably maybe going to St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, right? Well, you can go to St. Louis, Missouri, then get the load, go to East Coast. Well, who has a lot of uh, production? Indiana, maybe going to Indianapolis, and then Indianapolis going to Newark, New Jersey, right? Maybe going to Tennessee, Memphis, Tennessee, not the old Tennessee, but Memphis, Tennessee, right? Maybe getting to the beginning of the East Coast, Pittsburgh, and then continue if you really need to get to that Newark, right? Maybe going to Iowa, where we have manufacturing, where we have stuff. Maybe even going to Chicago first and then continue going to East Coast. So are we grasping this? What tri hole is? Well, tri hole is breaking back hole in two routes, which still make sense. And why do they make sense? Well, they do make sense because by breaking in two, usually you're gonna end up making extra money, but your time, your transit should kind of stay the same, right? And you need to know where to break. You cannot just say, okay, I am deciding to go here, here, here. First, you need to check, is that mile still the same, transit the same, but is there a load? And that's what try whole option is, right? So when you see this, when you see this, my new dispatchers, please start doing what I just show you. Make the map and start copying and seeing. Is that kind of make sense? If you're not sure about market, then copy and post that city and see. Go to the go to the market condition and start paying attention for flatbeds, right? Which area? So look at this in Jackson, Mississippi. We have in the last prior eight days outbound, we only had 900 loads. Let's switch this to Indianapolis. Okay, Indianapolis. So let's see. Do you see the difference right away? 2,800. Let's switch it to Memphis. If I'm going to be breaking in Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, let's do Memphis, Tennessee. Well, 17, uh, Indiana was better, but there was less trucks. So let's try, let's try Oklahoma City. Let's see if you can go to Oklahoma first, and then you're going to continue on East Coast. Well, it's no flat, bad loads in Oklahoma. But what if you are reefer? Well, if you are reefer, you have a better chance. What if you are driving? Well, if you are driving, there you go. You have more loads in the trucks, right? 4,000. So this is called, guys, learning your stuff, utilizing the data, and practicing, practicing, and practicing. Well, we're going to be done for today because, as I said, we already had the class. Hopefully, guys, you remember that our trucking safety and compliance is coming up in july our webinar on how to open trucking company what do you need to know maybe as a dispatcher providing this you can learn this if you're a previous student please reach out to us so you can get discount our pro dispatch training which is faster is going to be in august right so make sure you already sign up because you need to start studying what else our IFTA is coming up on the 16th. So do not miss because the next IFTA, the only I do this is going to be in October. I do it four times a year, right? So hopefully you like, hopefully you share, hopefully you comment. On Monday, we're going to be giving free awards for our members so you can still have a chance you can still have a chance go to our youtube channel first subscribe and then there is a thing join of course if you want to send us super thanks which help 
asked to give more free classes do that all the time when you watch our videos you can buy super things whatever dollar two dollars three dollars it's not a big deal for most of us but it helps others secondary pay attention that you know where to sign up for our classes right learndispatchtoday.com our trainings our services our partnerships right so if you're looking for something factory if you need the factory if you need financing for the trucks if you need the pro services right if you still looking how to apply for mc dispatch equipment financing if you're looking for equipment financing make sure you fill out the link we have a really good program with kc financials and actually they do an amazing job good credit no credit they still help you and i'm glad that we're working with them of course if you want that one month one month free for that make sure that you click if you have mcdot if not then you need to call that and mention this code right you need to make sure you call them and tell this code and they will give you the free months if you want to try everything is here we also adding truck stop affiliation they gave three months so that's why on monday when we're going to talk about truck stop it's going to be already posted there and of course if you ever want to see our reviews hear from us well you can connect to our facebook to google and that's where you usually if you guys want to follow us if you want to be uh seeing what's going on when the life's going on please make sure you become our followers make sure you also go to our uh, group right and we have lots and lots of reviews and we have five stars so we are proud that we have five stars we never had a bad review and we are actually understanding that education is important and education is our core business this is our group so if you guys posting that you are start dispatching or if you look for the drivers this is a good way to be this is oh that's me going on right there now look at that but if you advertising please i let everybody advertise as long as it makes sense if uh, it's good i don't block anybody so if you guys want to be uh on our group make sure you follow it's 24 7 trucking updates and news right we also on TikTok, and we are also on twitter and it's so funny because on twitter we could not get our learn this badge so on twitter if you're looking for if you're looking for us make sure we just added recently so we need to actually grow our um, twitter followers and we are there as a pro dispatch usa so i guess twitter's taking a little bit longer let's see let's say hi to few um okay thank you alex greatly appreciate you i appreciate you what is your facebook again our facebook is is right here so let's go back so this is our group but our facebook is dispatch training center same dispatch training center on tiktok dispatch training center on youtube and on twitter we are here we are actually pro dispatch usa right and we could just have four followers because you know what i was bored one day and i decided well i don't have a twitter what is a twitter i usually don't have time for everything because i already doing a lot so i opened the twitter so now we post in there we also going live there so hopefully we are going to grow if we get to 500 followers on twitter actually we can start making lives right there on twitter and hopefully we can change trucking for the bad well happy holidays make sure you enjoy your holidays don't work too hard take time for yourself for your family on monday 6 p.m i'll see you back because we have a few surprises 
we're going to have sale for the trainings. So you can have the sale for this badge, for safety, for EFTA. Also, we're going to have those free classes for our YouTube members. So it's still not too late to go and become a member. $4 a month, $3.99. And I do think that actually YouTube is paying half for your first month. So it's like a dollar something you pay, okay? So that's what it is. Thank you for following us. Make sure, again, you guys comment, especially on our YouTube, comment, like, put the comments, even if you just say thank you, whatever, so we can grow bigger because only together we can change trucking for the better. And remember that we have a bunch and bunch of tools. You guys can do a lot by learning the software by utilizing this, right? By making sure you know what all these tools are. We already cover market conditions. We already mar uh, covered quick rate search, rate review. Uh, we did not cover rate review because it is for the supply chains and logistics analytics. It's for actually mostly for brokers or shippers, shippers who want to see how much they should pay. Look at this. You can report bad behavior of who? Well, you can report bad behavior of brokers if they did not pay you or something, right? You have to choose who are you? Are you a broker, carrier, freighter, or shipper? Well, in this case, probably you're going to complain as a carrier. You're going to make sure that you put your account and you're going to tell what happened, right? You can submit uh, confirmation. You can add your rate confirmation and say, listen, Guys, we book the load from that. That is promising you that they verify all the broker and maybe it was double brokerage. Maybe you never got paid. You have to guys report. So that has a team, they investigate and they will cancel their account. They actually gonna see what's going on. Then you have, of course, that directory, which we were covering yesterday. If you want to find carriers, if you want to find brokers, if you want to have broker and carriers at the same time or shippers right remember we went through this you're looking for the queries advanced search active only which state let's say you want to find all the carriers in i don't know in indiana right you're not gonna choose the stars we did cover it yesterday maybe you only want local guys that's what you want power units from one to maybe one to three right and let's search and there you're gonna have that all the companies which have which are only interstate only in indiana short haul most of it that may be hot road trucking rsc solution so you can reach out to them right you have to switch here to 80 uh per page and this is your guys who deal with only intrastate right okay what else can you do well you can have help center one more time tracy if you're watching i already sent you guys link in the beginning before the class go back find all of this look at this that one for carrier right quick start look at this every tuesday and thursday they have the live webinar guys even even if you do not have that yet you can go trainings for the brokers but here it is you want to be for the carriers how do i post what what does it mean national load count uh how can i enable alarm what what do i do everything you need to do right for the carrier how can i search loads look this is a beautiful beautifully done i mean you you just have to sit down open it on one screen and start doing these steps over and over and over again. Then post your truck, right? Reset my password, understanding all details. Look at this. I did, I want to see this. So unfortunately, I cannot in class cover all these small details, but it breaks down for you. Well, what does this first mean? Well, this is the first is your load information. It's gonna tell you the distance. It's gonna tell you origin, the date, the load, truck, equipment how big you uh, how long is your trailer has to be 
4853. What is a commodity? Reference ID. What does it mean, reference ID, right? Second one, rate confirmation. So what does it include? Total, trip, rate per mile, market rate, spot market, cont uh, contract rate, right? Then second one, company. So what do you have there? Well, you have the broker uh, uh, name, phone number, MC, office location, reviews for the broker, credit score, days to pay. Then you have a book option. If you click on book, it's going to take you redirect to their website or their world board. Then you can save as, saved, booked, or called, right? You can even uh, put there, I already called, I already called, so you don't go through the same phone calls again. And then you have all other resources. So I can tell you this. That's why I love that that. And they did an amazing job. It took them a little, a little bit, right? It took them a little bit. Let's see on YouTube. I want you to also subscribe to them, guys. So let's go to YouTube and let's find them. So you guys can, so you guys can uh, actually, okay, free. Okay, that one, that, great, and analytics, okay, so look at this, you go to their uh, site, right, let's see, this, I mean, their YouTube, right, look at this, this is their YouTube, right, and you can start watching, look at this, surprise, wow, videos, well, who is that? I think it was me somewhere there. Was it me? Let's see. Ooh. We have all the goals, right? We did we also did those videos for Okay, so you got you got the you got that. So guys, one more time, you cannot just follow one source. We have other people who are doing really great. Make sure you learn from them. Make sure you start covering the topics from me, from other YouTubers, from that, from official magazines, read the newspapers, subscribe to maybe some logistic uh, magazine. Make sure that you are part of this industry. You cannot stop learning. You have to educate yourself, right? Starting with the basics, but then improving. Improving about operational costs, technology, right? TMS, what's management? Maybe, maybe becoming more efficient. Maybe negotiations have to uh, become better. Read books on negotiations, right? What is the best way to communicate? How is to write professional email without hurting anybody's feelings, right? What do you have to do to do better job? And that's what it is. Every day you need to improve. I'll see you guys, and hopefully, I will see you in safety and compliance, which is coming up. One more time, have a great weekend, and I'll see you on Monday, 6 p.m.